good morning. Good morning. Good to see you on this beautiful day, and good morning to those on Zoom. It's so good that we could gather today. Thank God for all of our many blessings. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray together the holy. Amen. The glory, I'm sorry. Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You are the Lord of the High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray together the color. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, whose Compassion embraces everyone. Gather the outcast and the lost. Heal the wounds of fear and distrust. And make us a community of reconciliation that we may embody your merciful love and rejoice in your astounding grace in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our first lesson, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord says, act justly and do what is righteous, because my salvation is coming soon and my righteousness will be revealed. The immigrants who have joined me, serving me and loving my name, becoming my servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath without making it impure, and those who hold fast to my covenant, I will bring them to my holy mountain and bring them joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their entirely burned offerings and sacrifices on my altar. My house will be known as a house of prayer for all peoples, says the Lord God, who gathers Israel's outcasts. I will gather still others to those I have already gathered. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the psalm in half verse. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Our second lesson, a reading from the letter to the Romans. So I ask you, has God rejected his people? Absolutely not. I'm an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God hasn't rejected his people he, whom he knew in advance. God's gifts and callings can't be taken back. Once you were disobedient to God, but now you have mercy because they were disobedient. In the same way, they have also been disobedient because of the mercy that you received. So now they can receive mercy too. God has locked up all people in disobedience in order to have mercy on all of them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the crowd near and said to them, Listen and understand. It's not what that goes in to the mouth that contaminates a person in God's sight. It's what comes out of the mouth that contaminates the person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended by what you just said? Jesus replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father didn't plant will be pulled up. Leave the Pharisees alone. They are blind people who are guides to blind people. But if a blind person leads another blind person, they will both fall into a ditch. Then Peter spoke up. Explain this riddle to us. Jesus said, don't you understand yet? Don't you know what, that everything that goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what goes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And that's what contaminates a person in God's sight. Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual sins, thefts, false testimonies, and insults. These contaminate a person in God's sight. But eating without washing hands doesn't contaminate in God's sight. From there, Jesus went to the regions of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from those territories came out and shouted, Show me mercy, son of David. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But Jesus didn't respond to her at all. His disciples came and urged him, send her away. She keeps shouting after us. Jesus replied, I've been sent only to the lost sheep, people of Israel. But this woman knelt down before him and said, Lord, help me. Jesus said, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. And Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. And right then her daughter was healed. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. This was an off week for me. Monday with the tornado. Uh, I was late getting to the hospital because I was down in the basement with the dogs listening to the sirens go off. And then Tuesday was a good day. <laughs> then Wednesday, I slept through my alarm and I was late getting to the hospital to work, but I made it. Um, hopefully my vice president and manager are not watching. Um, they'll know that I was late, uh, but things were okay. Uh, then Friday, I threw out my back. So I've been in a little pain. Um, and then I hit every red light on 59 on my way to church today. So I was later than I was planning to be. How was your week? Did you have kind of an off week? Yes. Yeah? Oh, good. I'm not alone. Yeah. And it's interesting as I have talked to folks and asked parents and teachers and other people, it's just a tough time we're all in right now. And uh, I have made myself happier because I decided to stay off Facebook except once a week. So if I'm late wishing you a happy birthday, I apologize now. But I'm tired of just so many of the comments and stuff, attacking people and insulting people and the politicians. I'm much happier. And it doesn't mean I'm not reading the news or aware of what's going on. But I just get tired of it. My sister and I had a conversation and she said, well, everybody has the right to their opinion. You know what I told her? No, 
everybody has the right to an informed opinion. Just because you have an opinion doesn't need you need mean you need to share it. It's like be careful what you say. Be careful what comes out your mouth. Now we get kind of dropped into our gospel lesson today, just before that, because uh, Jesus and the disciples are being accused of not doing the right things. They're accused by the Pharisees of not washing their hands before they eat. It's not one of the Levitical laws. But yet, you know those people. They like to find fault in everything. I've, had, I've heard people say to me sometimes, well, so-and-so doesn't do such and such a church. And I said, well, really? I said, I don't see you genuflecting. Well, my knees, I, I said, too bad. You should genuflect. You should bow when you go into the pew, and you should bow when you come up to receive communion, right? Isn't that the rules? But you know what? It's not anywhere in the prayer book to do it. The one that I have fun with, and Cindy and I were talking about it earlier today, that because we've kind of changed service, you don't have to wait till the candles are snuffed out. Once the blessing and dismissal have been done, you are to be sent out to be Christ to the world. But it's become a habit, a ritual for some people, that no, we just have to wait till those candles are extinguished, then we can go out. It's not in the prayer book. It's not in any theology book in the Episcopal Church. You don't have to wait. But some people get upset when I mention that. But again, sometimes we just get focused on these little things. And what did Jesus say? What really contaminates the heart? Is it what that goes in? No. Not the what goes in. What comes out? Jesus was kind of messing with folks' minds, like, he said, yeah, you, a lot of stuff you can eat. But you know where it ends up. John, do you have to deal with the, the sewage side of things? You don't. Oh, that's good. John is just water. Just clean water. But we all, you know, he says, what, what you put in will eventually go out, but what really matters to God is what comes out of your mouth. Do you speak blessing? Do you speak words of hope? Do you speak words that build people up and lift them up? Or do you say things that tear down everything and everybody just as it's your opinion? No amens, wow, okay. Are you awake? Yeah. Okay, just, say, just check it with you. I'm trying to get a, maybe an amen out of somebody. But we have to be careful what comes out of our hearts and our mouths because, as Jesus says, that's what God's concerned with. What's in your heart? And what comes out? Now, we have this interesting little segue then. because So we see Jesus saying, you know, the, the rules on certain things, they're just rules. They don't count. But then Jesus has this encounter. And it's very fascinating because... Uh, depending on your perspective and how you hear and see what's going on. Some people said Jesus was having a really bad day that he was ignoring this Canaanite woman. Now, in Jewish law, if you are not a relative, if Eileen was not my relative, I was not to touch her. And as a woman, it's like, you know, discount her because, you know, I, I don't owe her anything. So why would I want to even acknowledge that she existed? I'm a man. But in Judaism, if somebody came up and talked to you, you just, and they were not even Jewish. You, I mean, it, this was stretching. We see that Jesus ignored her. But she kept yelling out. I need help. And what was the apostles' response? Send her away. 
she's she's making a scene, send her away. She's not even Jewish, just send her away. And then Jesus makes a statement, says that I was sent to the house of Israel, which is sent to the people of Israel. But this woman says something, and it's very key. She kneels before Jesus and says, Lord, help me. And Jesus' reply is, it is not good to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, I was really troubled by this for a long time, but one commentator said, this is actually a play on words, kind of a pun. And the woman responds, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off their master's table. Woman, you have great faith. It will be just as you wish. The daughter was healed. Jesus provides an example of what it's not to be, to kind of be anti pharisaical He has this encounter, and at first we think, oh, he's, he's being cruel to this woman. He's not acknowledging her. But when she stops in front of him, he replies, he, he has this, conversation that's a pun, it's kind of a play on words, and her response grabs Jesus. There's so many right now that are hearing, that are being heard finally for the first time, but there are also people who are being heard that haven't had to speak up before because times are difficult. Look at a parent. I see a teacher, librarian. You've had to deal with some, some things that you didn't plan to deal with a year ago, did you? Did you? No, it's like, and all these voices are being heard and what's gonna be best for all of us, for the community? And I think that's what Jesus is pointing out in this healing of this woman, that we need to listen to those who are asking for help. And I want to tell you all, thank you so much for your generosity. We raised, you know, I'm not sure of the final numbers, but we're around $2,700, $2,800 for fish. That's over $20,000 in buying power. That we are helping those who are crying out, I'm running out of food right now. I don't have a job. I need help those who need medical treatment and care are being heard because of economic disparity. They're being heard. And so things are happening now that I'm grateful for and thankful for because I want to be able to help as many people as I can. And so as you go out this week, what words are going to come out of your heart? Will they show that close relationship you have with God? And when someone asks for help, are you going to ignore them? Are you going to listen to their cry? And is there something that you can do to help bring healing and repair to our broken world right now? God offers us these opportunities to be Christ to ourselves and to the world. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm our faith. Let us affirm our faith as we say. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. 
You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ. You lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, our Holy Spirit, you empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Loving God, hear our prayer. For your church in all the world, loving God, hear our prayer. Make your church into a house of prayer for all the peoples of the earth, that women and men in every place may love your name and joyfully offer their lives in obedient service. For our pastors, teachers, and ministers, loving God, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Strengthen the leaders of your church, especially our presiding bishop, Michael, our bishop, Jeffrey, our priest, Don, our pastoral associates, Mike and Al, and for all who serve. Help each of us to welcome the stranger and the outcast and to resist social divisions that honor the rich and forsake the poor. For the world and for its leaders, loving God, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Uphold the leaders of governments for the work of peace, especially our President Donald, our Governor Jay, and all elected and appointed officials who govern. Provoke their hearts to justice tempered with mercy and lead them to do what is right in upholding the common good. For those who farm the land, loving God, hear our prayer. Help farmers to live in harmony with your creation. Bless their labors and teach them to be good stewards of our earth and wise managers of the earth's produce. Bless and protect the migrant laborers who pick and process our foods. For children, loving God, hear our prayer. Defend our children from danger, fill their lives with loving care, and help us to raise them to love justice and to do mercy and to walk in your ways. We have pray especially for parents, students, and teachers in these times of learning from home, not being able to gather together with their classmates in person. We pray for parents stressed by having to work out of the home or from home and concerned about their children's educations. Give us grace, patience, and wisdom with each other. For the sick and those in distress, loving God, hear our prayer. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit, and enable those who are able to support them in their need. We especially remember Pat, Chris, John, Barb, Judy, Cynthia, and Pamela. Help us to be careful what we ingest in our hearts and minds, and mindful of what we speak or put on social media. Help us to reflect your love in our words and deeds to all we meet and to the concerns of our hearts. These prayers we offer through Christ by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we, we confess, confess we have not been obedient to your, your will for us. We yes. have sought justice for ourselves but neglected justice for others. We have insisted on our rights, but have not lived rightly in our relationships. We have desired mercy for our sins, but we have not offered mercy to those who have sinned against us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, free us from the prison of our disobedience. Friends, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Receive the gift of forgiveness and share that gift with others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Well, it's good to see you all here. You may be seated. Uh, we have a lot of... of uh, 
Well, we have two special guests, so Tom and Sue Hirsch are here with us, so it's good to see you both here worshiping with us from Florida. I'm, I'm glad you were able to come up for the cool weather we're having. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's good because so, some of those folks we've been praying for. So Cynthia is over in the library. Uh, she and Tyler are here, so Cynthia, it's so good to see you. Yes. Barb and John Shorty. So Barb, good to see you too. So all getting good reports of health. Well, Gail is here too. Gail, I kind of, you're, you're like, you know, you're just one of us, you know, but you are special. So, and just to give you some good news, I did see, I uh, stopped by to see Bruce and Judy and Judy's uh, hip replacement went very well and she's in good spirits. And uh, so uh, thank you for your prayers on their behalf. So thank you. Well, let us give God, let us give as God has so abundantly given to us. Amen. And as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, uh, may you again open and ingest God's grace into your hearts and lives. Sin and death. 
By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus had supper with his friends of bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took a cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood and the blood of the new eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that the sins that so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you forever and ever. The gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. So we offer ourselves to you and him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus and the breaking of bread, and share the life of the family of your children. Glory to you forever and ever. Loving God, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never curse. Take to the sea, the Lord is good. As they are they who trust in him. And for those sharing a home online and here in person, let us pray this act of spiritual communion. Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things. We desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this time receive you through bread and wine, come into our hearts. We embrace you because you said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Unite us wholly to you, because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen.
You have united us with Christ and with one another. And you have made us one with all your people in the heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The blessing of God, source of life, power of life, redeemer of life, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, go forth to serve your neighbors, to love your enemies, and to embody God's mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. send out. I have, I get to have some fun. So Bruce and Judy, I wrote in their card, happy 100th wedding anniversary. <laughs> Hopefully they laughed at that. Uh, let us pray. For yes, we did. Week, and especially for yeah. Oh. We Oh, you share birthday. birthday. That's right. I wonder if it was in last week. I don't no, know. It wasn't. It wasn't? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to write it down right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but let us let us pray. 
Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Cynthia and John. We thank you for uh, their lives, their servant hearts, and we're so grateful to have Cynthia with us today and that she's making uh, progress with uh, the health, health challenges that she had faced. And so we just give you thanks. May this be a year of multiple blessings, of new discoveries, and we just give you thanks for their lives. Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Blessings to Bonacera and Christina Farron. So their birthdays are coming up this week too. And I want to say thank you for all your prayers. I know that's what brought me through. Thank you so much. Here, you want to put it here? We know we can't use the church. Too much touching, you know. Oh, not. Yeah. Okay, here. All right, I can do that. I'm not touching things. So. <coughs> And now for anniversary, so for Bruce and Judy and for John and Barbara, let us pray. So gracious God, we thank you uh, for the covenant of marriage, that it, it exemplifies Christ's love for his church. And we thank you for Bruce and Judy, for John and Barb. And we just pray a blessing on their homes, on their families, protection. May their homes be uh, havens of hospitality, and love and your grace and so we give you thanks for their lives and how their um, their marriages represent uh, your love for the world and the church we give you thanks through christ our lord amen all right this is this kind of it almost feels normal <laughs> almost almost feels normal all right, uh, Forward Day by Day, uh, devotional booklets are available. There's some at the door uh, in the narthex as you head out if you'd like to pick up one of those. Uh, again, thanks to the Orem family, to uh, Peter, Krista, Craig, uh, uh, Christian, and Lydia for hosting St. James last Sunday for our Rogation Sunday. Um, thank you so much, and to all of their uh, great uh, staff at Midwest Ground Covers. Um, for all they did for us. And Sue, tell, tell everybody about how Zoom works. Zoom, actually, the Midwest Ground Covers folks got a 50-foot um, extension cord for their internet, so I had hardwired internet access at, at Midwest Ground Covers. That was great. So uh, everyone said they could hear pretty much uh, everything that was going on, so that, yeah. was, that was great. So um, have Ethernet, we can travel. So, <laughs> so thank you uh, for you and Mike setting that up for us and broadcasting live from St. Charles. Uh, again, Christmas in July, thank you so much. We're around $2,800. I don't know, we've got a final count, but uh, that will allow Fish to purchase $21,960 uh, in food through Northern Illinois Food Bank. So, again, thank you for your generosity in that way. Uh, becoming Beloved Community. Uh, Bishop Curry has called on the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement to do the hard work to learn, understand, and be transformed to become Beloved Community. So I am working feverishly. I've got some things up on the website. Uh, so I hope you'll visit the webpage under We Learn. Look for uh, some resources. Uh, so I'll have more books, recordings, and videos on uh, this week for you to listen and uh, to hear the voices that oftentimes we have not heard. And not because we not wanted to hear them, because we just didn't know about these voices. And I'll give you a case in point. My father, before he passed away, we were having a conversation. He said, I saw that movie, Hidden Figures. How many of you have seen Hidden Figures? What's that? Read the book. It's an amazing story about these very talented African American women who helped with the first and their skills and abilities, but how they were treated even at NASA and how they brought about changes. And my dad said, I never knew about it. And I said, Well, Dad, if we don't read history, from a black perspective, we'll only learn a white history. 
And I said, that's why we have to learn and, uh, from other voices. Um, one of the things I did at seminary, I hope you'll find this as humorous as I did, but back in the 1800s, one of our prayer books actually had prayers uh, for protection against Indian attacks. Well, you know how my mind works. I wonder if the Indians had prayers about white people attacks. It's interesting when we only see things from our perspective. And so I hope that you'll take time in the days ahead to take a look at that. Uh, Compassion Camp is coming. We're a little behind the, the eight ball because of me, because uh, there were some things I was trying to work out, but Sandy Whalen has put together um, this uh, wonderful resource for families. So we're gonna get these out to kids and families. Uh, to cultivate compassion for each other, ourselves, and the world. So uh, be on the lookout, parents, um, so that you can uh, uh, take advantage of that. And we're trying to figure out how to put the music component in or to send you the music component uh, with Compassion Camp. All right. Uh, is there anything else for the good of the congregation? All right. Well, I guess it's virtual coffee hour time, so you all can... Uh, chat here and uh, blessing on uh, it sounds like it's going to be a beautiful week this week so have a, a lovely a lovely day today and week and God's blessings <laughs>